Today we start this video on a sad note. On behalf of the entire membership of Unifor Local 88, we would like to extend our sincere condolences to Joe, Josh, and Mitchell Graves on the sudden passing of his wife and their mother. You are all in our thoughts and prayers during this difficult time. This is our first video since the triennial elections. I would like to thank everyone who voted for me. The vote of confidence you have shown by re-electing me as your president for another term is greatly appreciated. I would also like to thank, congratulate all the re-elected, newly elected, and acclaimed members of the leadership of Unifor Local 88. I lo look forward to working with all of you. Also, a huge thank you to everyone who put their names forward in the triennial elections. I hope you all consider staying involved with the local at some level going forward. Our standing committees are always looking for more volunteers. The next two months will be, be busy with meetings as we prepare to bargain a new collective agreement in September and keep the membership informed as we progress to the end of our current collective agreement. Um, there will also be a Unifor Local 8 Auto Talks 2024 button on our homepage of our local website. You can click on this to stay in, up to date with the latest news regarding bargaining. Now I'll just do a quick review of the upcoming meetings. Sunday, August 11th at 2024 at 3.30 p.m., there will be a skilled trades meeting at the local union hall. At this meeting, there will be an election for the apprenticeship rep and two delegates positions for the London Area Skilled Trades Council. To vote for these positions, you must be in attendance at the meeting. The election for these positions will be conducted by the election committee by paper ballot. The meeting is for skilled trades members only. Sunday, August 18th at 10.30 a.m. in the morning will be our next general membership meeting. At this meeting, all re-elected, newly elected, or acclaimed members of leadership will be sworn in as per our bylaws and national constitution. Please plan to attend to be sworn in if you are an elected rep. Child care is available. Reach out to me if you need child care. The election committee will report out on the triennial election results. As with any other general membership meeting, you must attend the meeting to vote on any recommendations or reports. On Sunday, August 25th, 2024, at 10 a.m. is the strike mandate meeting at Centennial Hall in London, located at 550 Wellington Street. There will be a vote at this meeting to authorize strike action if necessary. A strong strike vote will show support to the bargaining committee when working towards a tentative agreement. Members must attend this meeting to vote. The vote will be by paper ballot, and the election committee will conduct a vote and a ballot counting. And on Sunday, September 22nd, there will be a ratification information meeting at Centennial Hall, located at 550 Wellington Street in London. There will be a vote at this meeting if a tentative agreement has been reached. The vote will be by paper ballot and conducted by the election committee. Identification will be required to receive your ballot. Your GM CAMI badge, union card, or government photo ID will be accepted as proof when receiving your ballot. Production members will receive one ballot at ratification meeting to vote on a tentative agreement. Skilled trade members will receive two ballots at the ratification meeting to vote on the tentative agreement. One ballot will be to vote on the main economics package, and a second ballot of a different color will be to vote on skilled trade specific issues. Members must be in attendance to vote. In closing, if you require information regarding anything in our current collective agreement, benefit books, bylaws, or union constitution, you can utilize the local website at www.unifor88.ca. By clicking on the helpful link tab, you will find what you need in the drop-down menu. Contact numbers for elected representatives of the local are in the union contact tab drop-down member. Or you can also reach out to me at any time Hello and welcome to our first video that we've done in a, quite a little time. Um, I'd like to start off by talking about last week we posted our first in-plan update in a long time. Um, I've asked all the zones to combine uh, their different representatives and come up with an, a monthly report on what's going on in their zone as well as all the specialty reps. If there's something going on that the rest of the plant should know, uh, we plan on putting this update out every month with the battery plant now being actually in a different location of the battery department, we just want to come up with something every month that everybody across the plant can uh, see what's going on and everybody's up to speed every month on what's happening. Um, in other news, the deaf members. The company and the union over the last year have made, I believe, significant improvements for the deaf members. Uh, we now have an interpreter that will come in on very short notice to help out with uh, job postings for training or things like that. 
And just last week, we had our first deaf member um, successfully post to material handling, where they've been denied for almost 30 years. So I had a couple members call me about that, more about safety-related issues. We have taken that into consideration, and the argument wasn't just about a deaf member becoming a material handler. We did look at all safety aspects, not just from the material handling side, but also the people that will work around the deaf member. We do believe it's more than safe, but we'll continue to monitor the situation and make sure everyone stays safe. Uh, the other issue I'd like to talk about right now is the trades. Jason has been working on a solution to try and alleviate the overtime that's going on in the battery plant. The trades in the plant have been working a lot of overtime. Uh, they're getting a little bit worn out. So Jason's trying to come up with an idea where the trades across the plant uh, can be canvassed to work the overtime in the battery plant until GM answers our proposal for more staffing in the battery plant. Okay, the biggest issue that we are getting calls about right now and the one that's pretty well on top of most people's minds are what's gonna happen after October 1st when we enter into bargaining in September. Um, mainly two scenarios are gonna happen. We're either gonna be a pure seniority plant or we're gonna rotate two shifts. Um, our bargaining committee for the last couple of months has been working on scenarios for both of those situations. Uh, we can't wait for the last minute to decide on what's going to happen. We have to have a plan in place. So I wanted to talk about uh, both scenarios. First an overview uh, and then in more detail about both. Um, rotation versus one shift. In either scenario, we're gonna need a required to run number. Uh, the company's gonna have to give us a number of what they think um, the, the number of people are gonna be needed to successfully run our plant with our current uh, status, which is one shift in the bright drop and three shifts what we're currently doing over in the battery plant. Um, we have not got a solid number from the company yet. And again, this is a video, we are just making estimates out there, but I think it's safe to say right now that we would have approximately 650 members across the plant right now. Again, that is just an estimate and that only counts production people. Um, before people start jumping on the seniority list and looking where they are, let me explain a few things. There are many factors that can change this number. Volume is always our friend. The more sales we get, the higher the volume, the better we do. Even if we had increased sales of just 20 per day, that would probably drive a partial second shift and we could add 100 people fairly quickly. Um, there's other issues, ESAs. We've had 11 people so far this year either take a buyout or retire. So that's only 11, but it's 11 more people. Um, but my point is pretty well in either of the two scenarios are gonna go, I think the minimum amount of people we would need to run uh, as of the seniority sheet right now would be 800. Um, we have plans to try and keep everybody working if we do get the company to agree to a rotation. But if GM turns around and says it's gonna be pure seniority, um, we believe we'll have uh, far more than 800 as of the seniority right now. And uh, now I'm gonna go into both scenarios on what I think could probably happen. I'll start with the two shift rotation. Um, if we did get an agreement to rotate, I would like to guarantee the members who would have worked on one shift, the opportunity to still work full time. They would have the option to work full time just like we've done over the past year or two. Um, that would give everybody else the chance who would have been laid off to work two weeks on, two weeks off. It wouldn't be more than two weeks on and off, so we would never go back to the two weeks on, four weeks off. So the worst case for the junior members would be two on, two off. Um, we'd also get other ideas to try and entice people, such as a six month or maybe even one year leave. There's probably some people out there who'd be interested in taking that. Um, in, in, with this scenario, I expect we'll get at least 100 people who would take our current retirement packages, leave uh, through the ESA and retire in September or October or at the end of the year. Um, that would get our number from 650 to 750 pretty quickly. We just had 196 people take our option to stay off work. Some of those people will retire. It, I wouldn't be surprised if we had another 100 people take that option again, and all of a sudden we're at 850 or 900 people um, that would just continue to either not be here, retire, or just want to work one shift, but that would open up the door for the other couple hundred people to keep on working two on, two off. Again, before people light up my phone, or lit, lit up my phone, these are strictly numbers. We're just taking some estimates and we're trying to guess. Um, in the pure seniority, this could happen as well. GM might just tell us uh, they've had enough. It is quite a bit more money to rotate uh, two shifts and just go pure seniority. However, if the company was gonna run a pure seniority layoff, again, they would have to give us a required to run number, strictly for the plant, but also by each department. Again, if I was guessing, I would say that number would be about 650. However, with a pure seniority layoff, we would get into paragraph or letter 14 of our book, we would get bigger incentives to retire, and I think a lot more people would put up their hands. 
there would be more money for people to quit because some people, I think, uh, some of the junior members might have had enough of this. I mean, it's been going on for four years. So instead of saying 650, I wouldn't be, be surprised if we could get that number up to around 850 or even 900 would not surprise me um, when the final list did come out. Um, if we did go uh, to pure seniority, uh, the first thing the company has to do once we get a number, they got to purify every department. This includes the battery department. We have a special agreement with the battery department for part-time or uh, indefinite, or not for indefinite layoffs, but just short layoffs, short-term layoffs. But if it was indefinite or permanent layoffs, the battery department would be included. The company would have to give us a required to run number for every department. If you do not make that number, let's say QC would keep half the people roughly, you would bump to the junior people in the plant, which in all likelihood is welding PAs or assembly PAs, and that's where you would work. Again, the company would have to identify all the numbers. There would be a lot of movement in the plant. Um, there's a lot of reasons why the company would not like to do this, but unfortunately, Detroit US will have the final say. Um, there's currently 1,140 members officially in our plant. Uh, 1,139, I think, is the official number. And I would think we keep at least uh, approximately 900, maybe a few more than that. So we are still talking 250 to 300 people that would get laid off. It's not 500 or 400 even, it would be less than that. However, our goal is going to try and be to keep a, a plan to try and keep everybody working at a minimum of two weeks on, two weeks off. Um, we'll find out when we do. This will not be kept a secret. GM will have to let the people know if you're gonna get laid off, you will get a letter. It won't be some secret. Um, they'll have to give months notice so everyone I'm just going to say, take a breath. I know it could be bad news coming, but right now we don't have that news. Uh, we are waiting to see what happens. Um, postings. Unfortunately, we had our first members reduced from the battery department on their jobs of record. Uh, the battery agreement states that if you post there, you are locked in for 18 months. However, the rest of the agreement kicks in. So if you're reduced for whatever reason by the company, in this case, it's just reduced on the jobs, you go back to the regular contract, these people can post and have posted. They can post anywhere they want in the plant. It's just like any other person getting reduced. Now I just want to give an update on the battery department overall because most people don't see it down there. We actually have asked the company if they would do an open house for our members and working in the main plant. So hopefully this fall uh, we'll have an open house where everybody can walk through while they're working so you can actually see it work. It'd be nice to have a public open house as well that will likely wait till next spring or summer because I'm pretty sure the uh, public would have a great interest in seeing how our first battery plant in uh, North America or in Canada is running. But I'll start with the super phase. Uh, the super phase production started in April. The super phase area is almost completely online and running. Two of the five lanes remain to run yet on the super phase area. The first one hopefully will be running this week, which will leave just one. And the second CMN unit uh, should start up very soon. Our best production days so far out of super phase uh, in a total of one 24 hour shift is 2,047 units. And we have close to 70,000 modules so far that have, that have been produced since we started in early April. Uh, the PAC mainline production started July 15th. These are strictly the 12, uh, 12 battery units, 12 mod units. Our build status, since July 15th, our target to today was 259 units. We have actually built 260, so we're one over target, with our best day being August 2nd, when we built 33 packs. Um, a total of 14 containment jobs have been staffed to help support the uh, ramp up activities. These jobs will last anywhere from one to six months, depending how long it takes for the pack mainline to meet the quality, production, and air proofing validation activities. Next up will be the 20 mod trials on the pack line. So far, we've only made the 12 mods, so we want to start going on the 20 mods. Um, activity has started, and they actually sent their first scout down the line last week. Um, it has not made it through yet, but the first scout has been sent down. They are targeting an actual pull-ahead launch of the 20 mod in either late August or early September. Um, in closing, again, most of the questions we are getting about are getting our what's going to happen after October 1st. We are waiting for GM to make a decision. We are not aware of it yet. It's going to be one of two scenarios, but again, it's not going to be a secret. You're going to find out very quickly after we find out. And again, if it is a pure seniority layoff, the junior people are going to get a letter in their hand. They'll likely overshoot with the letter. They're likely going to give it to hundreds of people, but we have plans in place for either scenario to get as many people working with, with we won with everybody 
And if it's pure scenario, we have plans in place right now to try and keep as many as we can working here, hopefully between 850, 900 or even more. So we are aware of it. We understand the bargaining is coming. We're just asking people to take a breath, let us do our jobs, wait for the news, and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you.